Mercedes called me to check out the brand new W222 S-Class. So um, basically here it is. They asked me if I wanted to come in and drive it. This is the same Mercedes that I did my CLA class video. This is the same Mercedes that sold me my W221 years, years ago. This is, oh, now, okay. I guess here we go, now I gotta start complaining. Basically, as you can see, and I already made a video about it, I argued that I'm very disappointed that Mercedes caved into the critics and they took off the wheel arches. In my opinion, the wheel arches made this car special. You know? Oh, there's a CLS trying to get around here. But uh, in my opinion, the wheel arches made this car special. Unfortunately, now they're gone. With no wheel arches, from the side, this car looks just like everything else. Hyundai has their Equus out there. All they have to do is uh, put similar looking wheels. And from a distance, can you really tell from a distance that this car isn't an Equus? From a distance, it looks just like everything else. And um, I really feel, that's why I like putting pictures of what I made my car look like with the rims. I really feel that my W221 looked a lot better than this. I'm sorry, I just feel that way. Yeah, they got new headlights. They've over-engineered and redesigned the headlights. They've got a massage system in this thing. They have um, a lot of new equipment. Like, for instance, most cars have heated and cooled seats. Well, now they've got heated side arm cushions. And, uh, yeah, that sounds really cool and everything. And then they have this perfume air system, which if you put perfume in it, you can make the car have a, a scent thanks to an uh, atomizer in the car which uh, pumps perfume into the air. That's pretty cool. In fact, I'd like to see somebody, if not myself, I'd like to see somebody put some marijuana in there and make the interior car uh, smell like uh, weed. I'd, maybe we could call it Central Weed. That would be kind of cool. Maybe somebody could do that. But, um, you know, it look, it, it's a good looking car, but I'm really sorry. Without those wheel arches, I, I, just, I just don't like it as much. You know? I mean, it looks just like the C-Class now. now. Now this car looks like a very big C-Class. It looks like a very big CLA. It looks like a very, it just doesn't have the distinctiveness anymore. And to me, I, I find that a bit of a problem. Now, I like these new mirrors. Instead of going with that uh, sideways swipe like they've got on this, instead of going with that here, now they have uh, better light fixtures. So this is what $100,000 looks like. Or if you're leasing, this is what $1,499 looks like as a monthly payment. Is it enough? When BMW has their seven and 
Audi's pushing the RS7 at $100,000. The question is, is this car enough? Is it enough? I just don't know. But I'm going to have to check it out, get a closer look at it, and find out. Now, for comparison, this is what the old S-Class look like. And this looks like it's a 2008 or possibly a 2011. It doesn't really matter because they hadn't really changed that much with the exception of lighting fixtures and the side mirrors. Now, I um, always like the way those, uh, those some people call it pontoons, some people call it hockey pucks. Every, some people diss the look, but as far as I'm concerned, that made this car look distinctive. This car from the side, you could not mistake this car for anything else. That, that, that's what rolling money looks like. So the thing about it is when you're leasing one of these cars, you're not really paying $100,000. What you're really paying is uh, you know, a lease rate on about $55,000 worth of it. So that only comes out to about $1,500. When you see these cars on the street, everybody's leasing these cars. And the reason why is because nobody wants to take that massive hit in depreciation. After you put about 30,000 miles on one of these cars, the value drops to about $60,000, $65,000, depending upon how many options you had. If you took a base model, what you'd end up with is about uh, $60,000 worth left over. And that's why you see them popping up on the used market. So you see a lot of people have this car now. Now, the reason why I love this car so much is because I'm a very tall person. This car has given me unrestricted interior space. The BMW 7 does not give me unrestricted interior space up front, but it gives you a massive amount of space in the back. My problem is I spend more time driving it. I don't have a chauffeur. If I ever did have a chauffeur, I'd fire him because I'd prefer to drive myself. I like driving. Some people use these as limos and taxis and whatnot. There's nothing wrong with that. But me personally, it's all about the experience driving. So let's just take a quick look inside to compare the interior. They always had, my favorite thing was the multi-contour seats. They had a massage pattern right here and in the lumbar. And when you set it using this knob, see Mercedes made it so you could set everything using this knob, which was absolutely brilliant. They did that after BMW came out with the iDrive. And um, I always loved that. I always loved the fact that you could set every single thing in the car using just that one knob. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I also love the fact that right here you had the seat back, but in addition to that you had the main cushion, the, what I call a waterfall cushion, and that, that top cushion helps uh, to put more comfort under your legs while you're driving a long distance. Now for those of you who've never seen an S-Class, that's why I'm bothering to actually do this. I made a video a long time ago, years ago, about mine, and I was showing a friend the massage system. So um, if you look through my videos, you'll see it. Now, I always love the Mercedes because they put all the controls exactly where they should be. The seat controls right here, you got the power headrest, which is why I criticize Cadillac. They could have put power headrests in their car. They could have put a power waterfall cushion heated and cooled seats and then what really sold me on the mercedes was the fact that there were so many features that they had that nobody had ever thought of where if you push this button right here you could control the side over here that's brilliant i i don't know i don't know why nobody ever thought of that before that that's absolutely brilliant and you could control every single feature of this seat from when you push this button and it lights up red. You could control every single feature of this seat, including the massage function, by using either this knob or using these controls right here. So for a limo driver, it's absolutely brilliant. And it had the panoramic sunroof. Me personally, I don't see any reason if right now you wanna buy an S-Class, first of all, most likely, if you really care what you're driving, you really care how people see you, you're most likely gonna buy the new one anyway. But there were, to me, there's nothing wrong with the old one. The ride quality in this car is second to none. Even the BMW has a harsher ride. The Jaguar XJ has a harsher ride, and you, you hear it in the rear. Like, even uh, people I know have complained that, uh, you know, they felt like it was like grinding in the back, but it's not really grinding, it's because you can hear the tire noise. This car has a ride second to none. This car has such good glass that you could be parked in front of a loudspeaker and not hear 
vibrations. You could hear sound, but you couldn't hear vibrations from outside. This is the kind of car that I, I wish America could build. Problem is, it's $100,000. So if America built it, God knows how much it will cost. The Cadillac XTS is actually pretty close. The only downside is they don't give you V8s anymore. Now, the newer S-Class has started coming with a twin-turbo V8. They dropped the size of the engine from my 5.5. They dropped it down to like a 4-point-something, and then they added the twin turbos. But my problem is when you have turbos, you have to wait for it. Well, you don't really have to wait because the turbo lag is made almost non-existent by having the turbo spool up at like 1,000 or 1,500 RPM. But my problem is you don't get the full pull of a pure V8 engine when you're driving a car that weighs 5,000 pounds with a driver and a passenger. That's my only problem. So um, other than that, it, I couldn't give a higher score to the Mercedes S-Class. This is the best, I, I'm, I'm willing to say, this is the absolute best luxury four-door on the market. And uh, that's just what it is. Now, I'd probably say the best car ever made, you know, that might be a Bugatti Veyron or something, but, you know, definitely the fastest car, but it doesn't come with all the options. But this is, this is what you'd want to have as a family car if you were planning on keeping a car 10 years or more and you just wanted the absolute best in comfort. Not necessarily technology, because one problem I do have is um, the Mercedes system command never, ever worked well with my iPhone. I had a problem with that. You'd plug it in, sometimes it wouldn't recognize certain things and you couldn't control everything. So I did have a problem with that. But when it came to the cars built in technology, this car was absolutely second to none. This is what $100,000 looks like. 103,455. This is what it looks like, but this, this is what you expect to get for $100,000. But uh, I'll tell you, once they, once you start fielding those new W222s on the street, you're going to see all these people with these used S classes. They're going to want to trade up. Not so much for the exterior because I still feel that this car has the better exterior, but that interior on that car <sighs> improves on a lot of smaller things, just like the smaller details which I'm going to show you in a minute. So uh, this is it. And look look at all this goddamn space back here. Look at all this space. It's like, what, you know, when I would lounge out in this thing, it, it was like you were swimming. Got the mirrors, got mirrors for the back people right here. I mean, I never, there was never a better car than this. This was probably the best thing on wheels. Never a better car. Like the Audi RS7 is fast and everything. The Porsche Panamera, uh, turbo sport those are really fast cars but when it comes to luxury lounging this is where you want to be in an s-class and what did they say a long time ago they had a slogan they said s-class or no class all right can i turn it on i know i'm not going to drive nowhere okay all right Okay, so this is the new F550. First touch. Materials, they feel about what you'd expect. I mean, nothing really majorly new, but what I do like is that they finally chromed all the buttons. I said that when I reviewed the E-Class. They chromed all the buttons. The seats look a lot sportier. They've got, actually, you know what I noticed? They have a lot more bolster now. Like, for instance, I'm sorry, you know what, from first glance, this car actually looks like it has less space than the one I used to have. Okay, so they have this now panoramic, um, panora they have two dual LCD, basically, um, and they make it a panoramic uh, GPS over here, and then they have the main system over here, which you could probably swap. But I'm starting to look at this car, this car looks small, yeah, this car doesn't have, oh, they have seat belts that extend and retract. That's kind of cool. Uh-oh. Yeah, they have extended and retract seatbelts. This car has rear, um, what is it called? Uh, reclining seats. That's interesting. Reclining seats in the back. But if I sit like this, there'd be only a little bit of space right here. It looks like the, this car is smaller for some reason. That, and I, I'm thinking, yeah, this car looks smaller than the W221. And then with that thing right there, I guess you have to move the seat fully forward 
Yeah, but that's a problem. I mean, how you'd have just enough leg space if you were a very small adult. Now, this one has the televisions and all that, monitors. It looks good. It looks good, but it, this car looks smaller than the other one. Look at this. It, yeah, this looks a lot smaller. I like the reclining seats, and I like how the buttons are flush in the panels. That's really nice. But this car is definitely smaller than the last one. And they have window shade, automatic reclining. I believe you may be able to do it on the other side, too, because that's one thing. Mercedes treats these like limos. They make it so you can do both on the same side. Let's look at the trunk. Okay, let's look at the trunk. This is a trunk? Oh, I can't. Oh, there it is. Power trunk, right? I think this is probably a power trunk. They usually sell all of them power trunks. What's this? Oh, max 10 kilograms. So you have a shelf right here for 20 pounds. 10 kilogram max. Sure they have a spare. Oh, fuck. They don't even give you a spare no more. Damn. What the hell is wrong with these people? Automatic trunk clothes. Every car has got that now. Even the damn Hyundai Equus got that. So this is what you're paying for. This is it. You're paying $100,000 now for a smaller S-Class? Hmm. All right. Oh, that's no good. All right, is there, oh, there's a bin console here. That's interesting. And I also noticed they've made this thing bulkier. They've made this center transmission tunnel bulkier so that they could do things like make these parts disappear. Why? That doesn't make sense. Why do you have to make this disappear? All you had to do with the old one was just flip it over. What's wrong with these people? What is wrong with these people? Dual USB ports right here. Interesting. Is this, does this one have perfume air? Yes, it does. Does it? Yeah, this one's got a perfume air system. It's in there. I think they took the canister out. So they may have been showing people that. Okay, so it's all leather. That's interesting. It's all leather and this, that, and other. I'm going to probably drive it a little bit later right now. I'm just looking at the main features. The car is nice and quiet. They've, they've sculpted the sides of the car, so I feel... Not, I feel like a little bit tighter in here because of the sculpted sides. It's not really a big deal. One thing that is a little bit of annoyance is these bolstered seats. They're like they dig right into your sides. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry, Mercedes. You really hurt my feelings, man. You caved into the goddamn critics. You took off the, the few features on the exterior that made this car obvious at a distance and now you made the interior smaller what's wrong with you people why would you make the interior smaller why yeah it's nice to have slide forward chairs and everything but uh come on guys what's going on why are you making why are you intentionally making the product cheap oh no yeah the chrome buttons okay this is nice i don't know how i feel about this new steering wheel it's it, it's meh New turn signals, still got the same push button stalk. Some people complain about having that three on the tree style stalk. In a car like this, I mean, you're not racing anybody. This car is too big to race people. There's no reason to put that shift lever right here. This is not a sports car. This is a luxury limo. Touch that and it goes in. Yeah. You gotta hide everything. I gotta hide everything. Touch that and it slides up. And this, like Cadillac had in the uh, CTS, they have a motorized thing like this. But this is not motorized. This is all spring action. I don't know how long that'll last. And then they have another one right here. Everything slides very quietly. Yeah, that's cool. To tell you the God's honest truth, I am not as excited about this car as I was back in 2004. Or 2005. I'm not really as excited. I, I remember when seeing that, he said that this looks a little bit too much like the Budweiser emblem. And when people would get in the car, they'd say, hey, I didn't know Budweiser was making speakers. Okay, so these are the window switches. Everything, everything's basically, anything that you got to come in contact with is basically chrome. And uh, as I said, that these sides are heated uh, with the heated seat package. These are heated. Um, in my opinion, if you've got heated things, you should also have cooled things. Like, for instance, a steering wheel. When you have steering wheels that have wood, 
what apparently happens is if you leave these cars in direct sunlight, even though they have solar tinted glass, sometimes the wood gets hot. In my opinion, if you're going to go the route of making it so that anything I touch is either hot or cold, then let's go whole hog. Make this heated cooled, make the steering wheel heated cooled, make the seats heated cooled. I mean, you know, that's how you got to do it. That's how you got it. That's what you got to do in order to stay competitive. Okay, so I, you push that button right there. That moves the right side. You see that? Now I move the right side. I always love that. That is cool. Always love that. And then the uh, headrest automatically goes up and down. See, I wish Cadillac had that. So basically, you can create more leg space back here. Now, that's a lot of leg space. I'd be able to sit perfectly in that. But that's assuming, like, you move the seat up a couple of, uh, like, a couple of inches, about 10 inches. You move the seat up. I could sit back there. I could lounge back there. You know, be like a rapper. You got some hose chilling. Yeah, it's nice. And, and these, these sport seats look like they came, like, right out of a CLS. And uh, everything has a pillowy cushion look. So, you know, it's nice. It's really nice. They got the uh, monitors here. That's really freaking, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Monitors. I never liked monitors in a car. And the reason why is because back when monitors were a big thing, people would break into your car and take them. Fortunately, I live in a nice neighborhood, so I never had to worry about, um, you know, I never woke up and shit was broken into. So that's, you know. Therefore, the, you know, by the grace of God, go I. Okay, this is heated steering wheel button. They made some of these things easy to get to. That's a good idea. Um, lane assist, parking assist. That's good. That's really nice. So this is what $100,000 buys you. Now, this is $100,000. This is what $100,000 buys. It's basically the same thing. It's just that they've, they've improved... The look of some of the uh, buttons and settings, they've improved it. These, this button right here is for the uh, seat vibration and whatnot. <sighs> so what do you think? In about, what, two or three years, this car will be less than $60,000 and you can pick one up? You know, hey, it's, it's really nice, but I think the real problem is that the, the W221 was such a good car that this car is going to be a little bit underwhelming. I mean, yeah, it's nice that you have GPS and uh, sensor-guided uh, suspension softener that automatically softens the suspension based on what it senses on the road. Yeah, that's really cool and everything, but the W221 already had a fantastic ride. I mean, you know, that's the problem with psychological obsolescence. Eventually, you run out of selling points, and uh, eventually it's, it's really hard to sell people on something better when what you just had was really cool, you know, or really good. Okay, Mercedes Benz, hello. How are you? Das good? Don't let command distract you? Oh, sure I won't. All right, I don't want to get too much music in here because the problem is YouTube always censors me when I do music and then I end up messing up videos. So it's on now. Let me, uh, let me do something. Okay, so let's hear that radio. I'm in the club. I'm in the club. Yeah. Chill. Speakers are very strong in this car. Very, very powerful. Oh, I see they got Opie and Anthony. This is the, uh, Weather. Let's see what the seat button does, if anything. Okay, does it see? Oh, there it goes. Okay, you have to use the ignition to activate the, uh, uh, what is it called? The massage seats. Lumbar. You see that? It turns. I love being able to control everything from right there. It says, okay, shoulders. You can check your shoulder massage, and you can check the amount of heat going to your shoulders. So if you want more heat going to your shoulders or your passenger shoulders, and they got this new massage system, it tells you, hey, look. I can massage my ass, my back, my shoulders, wherever I want the massage, that's where it is. The dynamic multi-contour seat causes these bolsters inside the seat to inflate. It's really cool when you're going around turns and it hugs you to make sure that like you, you know, you stay facing straight. But the thing about it is this car is so big until nobody is really racing this car. You can't even really use this car like that on a track because it's a very long car and it feels like you're driving a boat. So that was that was my only real complaint 
but it's not even really a complaint. That's what this car is. Seat heating balance. You can change the seat heating balance. You can reset everything. So that's the backrest, lumbar, that's the static lumbar setting, shoulders, massage. So that right there, that is the car. Telephone button. Push telephone button. Got to attach the Bluetooth thing. I obviously won't be doing that. Media, that's for when you set up your uh, either your Bluetooth streaming or you set up the USB ports. That's cool. Navigation. Where would you like to go? I would like to go to the bra. I mean the bar. <laughs> the bra. <laughs> the strip club. Okay, so anyway. Um, a poor attempt at Chuma. All right, so you, now I don't know when Germany's gonna wake up and just give people a touch screen so basically you can just touch the screen and say, yeah, I wanna go there and I wanna go here and then just type it in. Problem is, with no touch screen, these cars just seem like they're a little dated. I mean, yeah, this is a great feature to have right here, but you have to have system redundancy. Back this up with a touch screen. And what's with this silly black thing right here? That's That looks just like out of the Equus. Why did they have this? Hyundai put this in their Genesis and their Equus, and then they put that black thing on it, I guess to try to make it like they hadn't just copied off Mercedes. But why did Mercedes do it too? I don't understand that. Why? Okay, so anyway, let's see. How, how hard is it to find a place? Let's see. You push Navi. Okay. Let's push the button. Okay, so you push the button. I want to set a destination. Destination. Let's see, address entry. Let's see how it's it's really easy to do this when you're driving. That's one thing I like. So let's see. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's really easy to do that. This is pretty easy. I'm gonna change a little bit. I'm gonna uh, start a different part of this. December? Yeah, I would really? think so. Um. Okay, so let's. Uh, yeah, I noticed that they had put a different uh, heating uh, for right. the. I've got to meet somebody in about 15, 20 about minutes. About 15 so, minutes? Yeah, okay. so we'll take a, a quick... Yeah, all right. All right. You know so, how everything works, right? Yeah. So just go right into drive. And you, know, you also... The other thing it has... Uh, it has the eco start-stop. You familiar with that? Yeah, that's where it uh, turns off the engine when right. you're waiting in traffic. My car weighs so much... Well, I have a SR, brand new SRT... Uh, uh, brand new SRT, right? That right. thing gets nine miles to the gallon. And right. the problem is when you're waiting in traffic, it still gets nine miles to the gallon, so you can't turn it off. Really? Yeah. It's a monster. It's right, yeah, it's right out there. I only buy them in black now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is, feels familiar. They just gotta go around the corner? Um. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of traffic here, so I guess I'll go that way. Yeah, then come around. And go. Yeah, this is beautiful. So, Formatic is about January, December or January. Well, no, no, December. December, okay. We went through a red light. Uh-oh, okay, I'll wait. Yeah, I guess he... Yeah, most of the time, they don't really bother you so much with the red lights as long as there's no traffic. Are they making an S400 out of this with the hybrid? Eventually. Eventually, not right now. Yeah, this is gorgeous. And I, I like how they redid the buttons. They look a little bit better now. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with the current, uh, the current car. I like the current car. And I, I you know what I really like? The, the wheel wells. How they didn't... Did uh, they flare it out, you mean? Yeah, I love the flares. And everybody keeps criticizing it. And I'm like, no, nah, this they looks great. It, they took it away on this one. Yeah. I don't know why. I, 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 I like the looks of this car better, to be honest with you. I don't know why they would do that. Because I think it gave the car character. You know? Got some turn right here. And this is a twin turbo V8. Right? right? Yeah, this is beautiful. And this gets about how much uh, mileage? You're looking at, uh, it hasn't been, hasn't been rated yet, but you're probably looking at about 25 on the road, 16 on the highway. 25? 16 mm -hmm. around town. But, okay, so 16, 25. next light and come back. You got it. Yeah, this is really nice. 
This is really, really nice. So they'll have lease terms as soon as uh, they well, start. Well, I have lease terms on the rear wheel, not on the old wheel. Only the rear wheel, huh? Okay. It's about 1500 right? For the... No, no. It's more than that. 16 70 Uh, you talking with nothing down, or are you talking about... No, with... Figure about 30 Oh, that's... Then it'd be less than that. Okay, so you, what do you do? You just usually put it on automatic? Yeah. I usually just put them on automatic because for the most part the sensors do a right. good job. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. So how did the last guy, how did he feel about like this oh, one over not? the, yeah. Uh, he liked it. He liked it, but he just wants a car right now. His, his 07 has got problems. Oh, his, he has a 07S 550? Right. Like what problem did he have? Suspension. Oh. Yeah, he's, yeah, he needs, needs some work and he wants What's the uh, maintenance, uh, what's the uh, coverage warranty on the powertrain? It's still 100. Four years. Uh, four, four years, 50. 50. He's going to come up to that next line. Yeah, see. Yeah, that's a good car. This is really good. The pickup's still good. I, I did notice there was a big change after they changed from the 5 liter V8. I mean, with the turbos, it does, um, the turbos gives you more gas mileage. The thing about it is the pickup's faster with that, with that V8, with the yeah. 5 liter. Yeah, you were way out in the middle of nowhere here. Okay. Yeah, let me, all right, let me go. Now, this one doesn't have that system I read about where, like, the camera scans the road and it determines how to soften the suspension, uh, does it? This one, I don't think so. We haven't seen, I didn't see the, uh, the what do you call it, the, uh, the, the sticker on this car. I also know that you have a perfume ad yeah. thing. They must have taken it out or whatever. Right. All of them come with that? No, that's an option. Oh, it's not a big, It's not a big option, but it's an option. Hmm. Yeah, this is gorgeous. And before we moved even on the sunrise. He was a I younger, a little yeah, little he right. was a younger guy. He was a younger guy. I, I can't even remember his name off the top of my head, but he doesn't, he stopped working there a long time ago. All right. Come okay, around. Okay, right. And then, you want to park Yay. Oh, you want to park Yeah. You know, okay, you perfectly. I'll let I'll uh, okay. stop and button. There you go. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was always a nice feature. All right. Okay. These are new headlights. So, there it is, the new S-Class. Should I consider buying it or should I just keep on giving all my money over to Chrysler? For Jeeps and 300s, I don't know. It's a hard sell because the thing about it is even my car has a lot of the features this car has in it. You know, it's like everybody has caught up and ultimately that's the problem. They had to change this car radically because everybody's caught up. Now, if I were to buy another one of these cars, it'd probably be a 4Matic version. I wouldn't go S63 because that's a ridiculous amount of money. I could just put that money into another SRT supercharged. But uh, this is a gorgeous car and uh, fine ride but honestly I didn't really see that much different between this one and W221